Hello guys, hope you are all doing good and the preparations are also going on good. To support the 2IM initiative, I am going to talk about one of the concepts in permutation combination that I think the books have not covered very well. The question I am attempting to answer is how to distribute n identical objects among r people. This is the formula that most of the books refer when, they, when you are solving this kind of questions, but it is very rarely explained. Now I'll be attempting attempting to derive this formula or rather explain how this formula is arrived. It's very difficult to explain concepts in N and R. So let's take value or uh, some values for them. Let's check N is equal to 5 and R is equal to 3. So I'm trying to distribute five identical objects among three people. The way I'm going to do this is to introduce Two sticks into the sequence. So, for example, since I want to uh, distribute five objects among three people, I'll be introducing two sticks here. These two sticks will cre create three compartments inside in this series. So, the first compartment will be, will be what the first person gets. The second compartment is what the second person gets, and the third compartment is what the third person gets. Now, you notice one thing that. Since we have three people, we need two sticks. If we had more than three people, let's say four people, then we would have required three sticks. So basically the number of sticks required to create n compartments is n minus one. So here we want to create three compartments for three people. So we want to use two sticks. And now the question becomes really easy. What all you need to do is take all this and find arrange and rearrange the, uh, them among themselves. Now how would you go about solving this? You know that you have seven seven objects. So you just find uh, rearrange them among themselves and then you uh, you know that these five are identical. So you'll be dividing by five factorial and two factorial. Now this this is what your answer is and this is what this formula also states. How, how did we reach from here to this formula is that you had n plus r minus 1 sticks so this factorial and in the denominator you had this as n factorial into r minus 1 factorial so making some manipulations into this you would get n plus r minus 1 factorial divided by n plus r minus 1 minus r minus 1 so the, basically these two get subtracted into r minus 1 factorial so here r and r get subtracted and 1 and 1 get subtracted and what you are left with this formula but now you no, no longer need to remember this formula you could use this concept of introducing sticks to get to your final answer that's from my side Best of luck for your preparations. Remainder theorem says that if you divide a polynomial of this kind like x, x square plus 4x plus 2 or something, you divide this kind of polynomial by, by x minus 3, you either you get no remainder or you get some remainder. Means it fully divide this or it doesn't divide it so if it's not a divisor of this then in that case if you put the value of x is equals to 3 here you will get the remainder for example here i can put 3 square plus 4 multiplied by 3 plus 2 what would i get i would get 9 plus 12 plus 2 which is equals to your 23 okay so that would be the remainder as here in the explanation of this theorem it is given that x square minus 4x plus 2 is divided by x minus 3 just put the value of x as 3 in the equation and you would get minus 1 as the remainder so now we will discuss our problem so first of all we would convert this 
into your polynomial form. So for this we can write 3 to the power a4 plus 3 to the power 63 plus 3 to the power 41 plus 3 to the power 21 plus 1 as 3 to the power 20 to the power 4 multiplied by 3 to the power 4 plus 3 to the power 20 to the power cube multiplied by 3 cube plus 3 to the power 20 square multiplied by 3 square plus 3 to the power 20 multiplied by 3 plus 1. Now just let 3 to the power 20 is your x. Okay, so just put the value of x in this equation. You will get 3 to the power 4 can be written as 81 x to the power 4. 3 to the power cube can be written as 27 x cube plus 3 to the power square can be written as 9 and this is x square plus 3x plus 1. Now we have x plus 1 as the divisor and from here we, the value of a is 0 minus 1. So we would just put this as suppose this is our f of x is this so what would be f of a f of a would be 81 minus 1 to the power 4 plus 27 minus 1 to the power cube plus 9 and minus 1 to the power square plus 3 and minus 1 plus 1 and from here we would get 81 minus 27 plus 9 minus 3 plus 1 and from here we would get 61. So 61 is the remainder. Superman is standing in front of 10 buildings. He had to rescue Lana Lang, who is being held captive by Lex Luthor on the roof of the 10th building. He can either fly directly to the 10th building, which I think is the real, which is really the logical thing to do here, or can jump from the, roo uh, from the roof of one building to another in any sequence he likes. However, due to a curse, he can't jump back to a previous building. So it, here is the constraint given. In how many ways he can reach the 10th building so that he can rescue Lana? Okay, so this is the question I tried to make. Uh, looks like a typical PNC question, but, but here's the thing. So if you're one of those students who really hates uh, to go and solve question with the PNC formula, uh, I'm going to discuss two approaches here and I hope you enjoy. So, so in the first approach, approach one. So let's forget about in this approach. Let's forget forget about uh, ten buildings. Let's forget about just start with one building. Okay. So if there's one building, how many ways Superman can jump? Uh, do this. I mean, there's only one way, zero to one. So there's only one way, right? Okay. Then if there's two buildings, how many way Superman can do this? So he can either go 0 to 2, right, 0 to 2, or 0, 1, and 2. So 0, 1, and 2. So there's two ways. Similarly, if we have, if we go for three buildings now, 1, 2, and 3. So here, um, he have, he can directly go from 0 to 3. So there's one way. Or he can go 0, 1, 2, 3. 
so there's another way or he can go 0 1 then 3 or 0 2 3 so this is the four ways we find he can do this similarly uh, if you notice that we already find a pattern and if you calculate for four buildings you will get nothing not, mm, just eight ways okay due to the limited time I'm not gonna calculate it but the pattern says that uh, there's nothing but if the, I have n number of building then there's 2 to the power n minus 1 ways in which he can do this right so since we have uh, here 10 buildings so it will be 2 to the power 10 minus 1 which is equal to 2 to the power 9 which is nothing but cube of 8 which is 512 ways so this is the uh, this one approach um, but there's another approach uh, which is more juicier than this and I think that will be even more better for uh, exam perspective so I will try uh, try another approach one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ignore my buildings but okay so if we can see there's 10 buildings and superman is here on zero so for every building if superman uh, for building one suppose uh, superman has two choices he can either skip the building or land on the building right so there's two choices and for, similarly for the second building he can either skip it or land on it it's two choices uh, Similarly, for all the other buildings, all the way to building number 9, he has two choices. However, for the 10th building, he has only one choice because he cannot skip this building. He has to land here, right? So he has to land here. For all the other buildings, he has two choices. And this can be, therefore, there's how many twos? Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine twos. And which is nothing but similarly again 512 ways and I hope you enjoyed the question thank you